I said yesterday, New York is testing more people than any state in the country and per capita more than any country on the globe. That is a uh, positive accomplishment, pardon the pun, because we want, we want testing, we want more testing. We ramped up very quickly. We're doing it better than anyone else. And that is a good thing, because when you identify a positive, then you can isolate that person. And that's exactly what we're trying to do. When you increase the number of tests, you're going to increase the number of people who test positive. And the numbers uh, show exactly that. We have now tested 61,000 people. Uh, newly tested 15,000 people. So these numbers just are exponential to what is uh, being done anywhere else in the country. And that's why you're going to see much higher numbers than anywhere else. Total number of new cases, 15,000. I'm sorry, total number of cases, 15,000. Total number of new cases, 4,800 new cases. You see the state, uh, more and more counties. Uh, we're just down to a handful of counties now where we don't have existing cases. As I said, that is going to be 100% covered. It's just a matter of time. Uh, on the hospitalization rate, which is a number that I watch very closely, it's 1,900 cases out of 15,000, 13%. 13% is actually lower than it has been. We've been running at 15%, 16%, as high as 20%. This is 13%. This is the key indicator because this is saying how many people are going to come into your health care system as the number goes up. Uh, so this uh, is, a, uh, is, is not bad news. Uh, across the country, you see New York now has 15,000 cases, Washington State 1,600, California 1,500. So we have uh, roughly 15 times the number of cases. Now, do we really have 15 times the number of cases? Uh, you don't know. We're testing much more than anyone else. Uh, so that is a major factor in this. But I have no doubt that we have more cases. We have more density. We have more people from other countries who come to New York than many other states. Uh, so, um, I, I have no reason to believe that we don't have more. I don't believe we have 15 times more. I believe that's also a factor that we test more than anyone else. Uh, 114 new deaths, total number of deaths, uh, 374. And that is a sobering, uh, sad, and uh, really distressing fact that should give everyone pause because that's what this is all about is saving lives and we've lost 374 New Yorkers. Keeping it all in perspective, uh, Johns Hopkins has followed this from day one, 311,000 cases, 13,000 deaths. Statewide deaths to the extent we can research the cause of death and the demographics of death, what we're seeing roughly, 70% of those who passed away were 70 years old or older. And the majority had underlying health conditions, okay? So it is what we said it was. Approximately 80% of the deaths of those under 70 years old had an underlying health condition. So, young people can get it, young people will get sick, young people can transfer it. Mortality, lethality, older, compromised immune system, underlying illness. That's what we're seeing. But even within that population, the capacity of our health care system can save those lives. It doesn't mean 
Just because you're 80 and you have a compromised immune system or you have an underlying health condition and you get coronavirus, you must pass away. That's going to depend on how good our health care system is. But in terms of overall perspective, I'm afraid for myself, I'm afraid for my sister, I'm afraid for my child. Older, underlying illness, be very, very, very careful. This gets back to Matilda's law. This gets back to my mother. Uh, that's my fear. This gets back to nursing homes, senior care facilities, etc. Uh, I'm requesting today from the federal government that the Army Corps immediately proceed to erect temporary hospitals. I went out yesterday, I surveyed the sites. Uh, there are several good options that give us regional coverage. A, an Army Corps temporary hospital at Stony Brook, which is on Long Island, Westbury, which is on Long Island, Westchester, where we have that uh, terrible cluster, which is, uh, thank goodness, uh, uh, reducing. And the Javits Center, which is a very large convention center in Manhattan, in New York, and New York City is obviously where we have the highest number of cases. Time matters, minutes count, and this is literally a matter of life and death. We get these facilities up, we get the supplies, we will save lives. We're also implementing uh, the trial drug. We have secured 70,000 hydrochloroquine, 10,000 Zithromax, uh, from the federal government. I want to thank the FDA for moving very expeditiously to get us this supply. Uh, the president ordered the FDA to move, and the FDA moved. We're going to get this supply, and the trial will start this Tuesday. The president is optimistic about, this, uh, about these drugs, uh, and we are all optimistic that it could work. I've spoken with a number of health officials, and there is a good basis to believe that they could work. Uh, some health officials point to Africa, which has a very low infection rate. Uh, and there's a theory that because they're taking this anti-malarial drug in Africa, it may actually be one of the reasons why the infection rate is low in Africa.